October November 2019 Paper 2 variant 2 Question 1 A part 1 Draw the shape of the P orbital So you just draw these two loops orbital Part 2 Write an equation to show the first ionization energy of silicon Okay, So it must be one mole of gases silicon gases atom and this gases atom will release one electron one mole of electron and form this gases ion with one positive charge so must be all gases form explain why there is a general increase in the first ie of the elements across period 3 so when it's across period 3 we know that proton number increases more proton number and in the period 3 elements they have the same inner shell same number of inner shell inner shell will responsible for the shielding so we know that inner shell they are the same means shielding is almost constant the shielding is almost constant okay because of the proton number increases and the shielding is not really increased together as it's almost constant because same number of inner shell therefore the nuclear attractions will increase across the period the nuclear attraction towards the balanced electron will increase part 4 okay so from this uh, figure we know that the elements a okay it will uh, ionize means this is a ie ionization energy for the same elements first second third until 10 for these elements A. From this ionization energy, we know that element A must be in the group 13. Because from the third IE to the fourth IE, there is a big jump. A large increase in IE, we know that these three, these three IE, because of the valence electrons, remover and the four electrons is from the inner shell so it's going to take more energy okay so therefore we know it's group 13 why because there is a large or larger increase between the third and the fourth ie showing that it has three valence electron Okay, so this uh, is the uh, isotopes, silicon isotopes uh, calculation. It's given this uh, relative at isotopic mass of silicon 28, 29, 30. And 92.2% of the uh, silicon 28. And the total percentage of the silicon 29 and silicon 30 is 7.8 total percentage of these two will be 7.8 now given the relative atomic mass is 28.09 calculate the abundance for the silicon 30 so this one is very easy you need to put one unknown it's better to put the unknown with the silicon 30 so you just put uh, uh, the this 7.8 minus x for the relative abundance okay, of the uh, silicon 29. Okay, this one, as usual, 28 times 92.2 given, okay, plus 29 times 7.8 minus x. So x is the abundance of the uh, silicon 30. So when you sum up this and these two, you get 7.8 and of course 30 going to time x ok 
okay, over total relative abundance, which is 100. Okay, then you calculate x. x, you should get 1.2. So we know that the percentage of abundance of silicon, 30, is 1.2. Part 2. Silicon reacts with nitrogen gas to form Si3N4. Si3N4 is a solid with a melting point of 1900. This is considered very high temperature. So we know that this compound must have giant structure. And it is insoluble in water and does not conduct electricity when molded. So we know that this one is giant and is not ionic. So it's very clear this must be giant's molecule. Okay, suggest the type of bonding and the structure of this. So we know that it must be the giant molecular structure again. And it must have a covalent bonds within the molecule because no ions or no ionic bonds there means it's just a covalent network okay why so you just explain like this as it has high melting point shows that it's a giant structure and no mobile ions and anions to carry charge when it's molded okay part c sulfur containing compounds such such as uh, C2H5SH found in the fossil fuel and produce SO2 when they burn. Okay, write an equation to show complete combustion of this compound. Very easy. When an organic compound is get burned, so it's always form oxide, means carbon will form carbon dioxide, hydrogen will form water, and the sulfur will form SO2, not SO3, yeah? it's SO2. Without catalyst, SO2 will form. Okay, therefore, you just balance the equation. Okay, this one, this compound with oxygen form CO2, H2O, and SO2. Balance it, you get this equation. Okay, part two. State why the presence of SO2 in the atmosphere has environmental consequence. Describe one of the consequences of the environment. Okay, this one very easy. SO2 after it's oxidized, it will form SO3. SO3 will form the acid rain. So means it will cause acid rain, which will lower the pH of soil or river or damage building or it uh, harms a plant aquatic life leach away the soil nutrients all this you can choose one okay d so2 reacts with ozone to form so3 in two different reactions so this is the first reaction okay so2 with o3 form so3 and o2 okay one mole plus one mole two moles one mole plus one mole, two moles. Okay, state and explain the effect of an increase in pressure. Okay, to this composition of the equilibrium mixture. So we know that the left and right hand side, they have the same moles, two moles, two moles. So therefore, we know that the pressure will not really has any effects on it. Okay, so it has no effects. Okay on the equilibrium so as they have the equal moles on both sides so same mode two moles it has no effect okay on the equilibrium okay as they have the equal moles on both sides okay okay part two in the the others reaction uh, a different equilibrium is established at 300 Kelvin okay, as shown in this equation SO2 plus O3 from SO3 okay, Delta H is positive 462.3 suggests a temperature needed to increase the yield of SO3 very easy because we know that this is endo 
So forward reaction is going to absorb the heat. So it means we have to increase the temperature, let the equilibrium shift to right to absorb the heat. Okay, so therefore we can suggest any temperatures as long as higher than 300 so let's say 500 okay so then you just explain because the forward reaction is endo endo and the equilibrium will shift to right to produce more product eventually to absorb the heat that introduced okay that's all for this question thank you